Hi everybody, welcome back to the Unusual Grace channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Always good to see you. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. And to my new subscribers, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Unusual Grace family. In this episode of God Speaks, I want to share with you just some thoughts on the topic after Christmas, then what? Stay tuned. All right. Thank you for sticking with me. You know, interestingly, this year was very different for me as it relates to, to Christmas. I did not, you know, do as many calls. I only did a few. What I usually would do would make some calls and, you know, talk with some people, wish them Merry Christmas. And so I didn't do as many calls as I, I used to. I did not do many text messages either or WhatsApp messages. I pretty much kept a low profile this Christmas. What is because I have been reflecting and at some point I was almost discouraged thinking about the holiday season. Because one of the things that kept going on in my mind is okay, every year, you know, we get caught up in the festivities of the season, cooking, you know, more than one meat and <laughs> You know, getting together with family, that's a part of it. And going to church, that's a part of it. And all of that. And at home, apart from the cooking, there is the cleaning and the decorating and, you know, all of that. And of course, many of us continue to do those things because of the joy that it brings to the the children and the, just to see the smile on their faces and those expressions of excitement and wow and you know it it is it is good to to do that just for them but i realized for me personally i kept thinking to myself what's the point you know what's the point what really is the point Hence why I want us to just quickly talk about after Christmas, then what? I listened to the radio, local radio recently, and of course, this particular station, which is a gospel station, which I will not say because I'm not sure about the, you know, legalities or whatever. But I listened to the station and this particular station started playing Christmas songs very early, like very, very early, maybe from last month, because they usually try to be the first. Anyway, I noticed the trend of Jamaican Christmas songs this year. There were a lot of remixes, reggae remixes of traditional Christmas songs and carols. Oh, tell it under mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it under mountains that Jesus Christ is born. Have a merry little Christmas from little Jay. Son, my day. Listen this. I bet you never hear a Christmas mix like this. Remember this. Christ is the reason for the season. So from the ready, say you're ready, let's go. From the ready, say you're ready, let's go. From the ready, say you're ready, let's go. Listen to my. And then there were some other kinds of songs. I listened to one, for example. I don't know who the artist is. I really did try to find it, but I didn't. But the, the chorus of the song pretty much spoke to Christmas parties. And when I listened to the song, I thought to myself, 
there are so many Christians who are missing the mark, you know, to think that Christmas is about partying and, and just having a, a grand time. Almost as if we're either patterning the world or competing with the world or something. But there are actually Christians who believe that Christmas time is really a time for some kind of party. They might not go to the secular parties, but they'll create their own. And sometimes that's not a good idea, but in and of itself, it's not something that I totally write off, but there needs to be some kind of parameters and so on. So I heard, you know, so the Christmas songs, I just was not feeling it. You know, Christ is born. Go tell it down the mountain over the hills and everywhere. And so, here are a few realities of this season. Number one, there are different levels of spiritual maturity when it comes to Christians, and that's one of the things that we need to recognize, and for me too. There are different levels of, of, of spiritual maturity. And so I think about some of the young people that I know who are Christians. I think about children that I know who are Christians. They will just not have the same kinds of convictions that a mature Christian would have. And so we have to walk alongside them, guide them and teach them. And with that said, with that reality, there is nothing wrong with a good gospel concert. A gospel concert that is clean, wholesome, Christian entertainment. Of course. So there's nothing, I see no problems with that. When in my younger days, when I was a younger Christian, Going to gospel concerts was all the rage for me and my friends. We went to gospel concerts. But the thing is, it was going was one thing, but there, there, when you go there, you actually get a word because there are some artists who see their ministry as ministry, who see that business as ministry. And so they would always give a word. There are some who would preach a two, three minute sermon. And, you know, when you're leaving, you feel fulfilled. Like, wow, it was good being here. Good Christian entertainment, excellent music. And you're getting the word of God. So, so there's nothing wrong with concerts. And if, if concert is not your thing, you know, we don't need to write it off as if, you know, nobody should go to concerts because, no. There were some good gospel concerts back in the day when I used to go to concerts. The, the concert thing in Jamaica was interrupted by the pandemic, but they're coming back now. And, you know, it's 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 a great place to be. But we now, in these days, we have to do so with caution. But we still do have some quality gospel artists who take what they do seriously, they seek God, they pray over it, and they come ready and charged up for ministry. So that's fine. So that's the, the, the reality. So reality number one is that there are different levels of spiritual maturity. So how you decide to spend your Christmas or festive season might not be what someone else would but we can still be open to as long as it is clean, wholesome, godly, God honoring, then we should feel comfortable participating in something like that. Reality number two, the second thing is that Christmas time really is the is a time for food, fun, fellowship, and family. That's all, those are all the F's, right? And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's a it's a holiday time and 
Persons are not at work for the most part. And for some families, they get together once a year and it's that time. And just seeing family connecting with them in person, family members who you would not otherwise get to see throughout the year because of work and busy life schedules and so on. So for some people, that's what it's about. And they do not compromise on that. They know that when Christmas time comes, they are going to the country, they're going abroad or coming out to Jamaica, wherever it is. But they, wherever the family is, wherever the family house is, wherever the family meeting is, they're going to be there. And of course, you know, you have to have on the menu, curry goat, you have to have oxtail and all kind of chicken. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So it's that time and you get to link with family and the children get to play and the adults get to catch up. And, you know, in some families, there's always a little drama and there is always a little dramatist. You know, I think every family has one of those. Yeah. <laughs> My family sure does. So that's the reality. Reality number two is that that's that's just where it is for some people and uh, you know no church necessarily for some they might go to church and then they go and meet with their family and some just don't bother with church and then the third reality is loneliness there are some people who they don't have any family to go to they don't have children and sometimes they have grown children but they're probably all the way across the world and maybe they get a video call or phone call. Some people are not in contact with their children at all. And so they're just alone and they're alone. They are alone. And even though they might be a part of a church, sometimes even though that is the case, they still feel lonely at Christmas time. Coming out of the pandemic as well, there are some who would have lost loved ones during that time and spending another Christmas without a husband or without a wife or without a child, without a mother whose house we used to gather, you know, different, different, different situations for different people. But the fact of the matter is the reality is that there are many people who are lonely round about this time and they they don't they don't enjoy the season at all they get depressed they isolate and uh, it's just there are some people who are okay with it there are some people who are okay with it they're okay with being alone they're okay with not being around people because they have grown accustomed to that maybe it's their personality type maybe it's their disposition you know, maybe it's a way of protecting themselves because, you know, bad experiences. But there are some people who learn to cope and they do different things and they are okay with being by themselves. But the reality is many are not, which, which leads me to this question. And I want to challenge Christians and to ask, in all the giving and receiving of gifts, in all the fellowship, in all the fun and the laughter and the family and the food, you know, did, did we really take the time out this Christmas, this season, to reach out to even one person who we know would probably be lonely at this time of the year because they would have lost someone. Someone who we know will not be able to get together with their family or so. Did we invite someone? And I'm not saying that every Christian must invite somebody to their home for dinner because that might not be practical for some. And depending on how your family is structured or your home is structured and, you know, your own peculiarities and so on so that's not the point but the point here being how did we reach out to someone else during this time as we gather with family and friends and as we are doing our own thing have you reached out to someone who you know is sad or who you think might be sad at this time 
just to listen to them, just to talk with them? Did, did you stop to share the gospel during this time as well? Yeah. It amazes me how many Christians, you know, don't even think about the gospel during this time. And it is a great time to think about the gospel because as one author says, as one speaker said, people are more open to receive the gospel during this time because of the season of giving and receiving people, people's hearts are more receptive during this time. So it's a great time to share our faith and to share the gospel with somebody. Have you? Well, we are here to answer this question. After Christmas, then what? The lights are going to come down. The decorations are going to be put away. And then it's back to work for some. However, on the spiritual side, I want us to consider this. How you handle the festive season will determine your state of mind, your conscience, your spirituality, the quality and status of your relationship with Jesus Christ immediately after the season. Let me simplify that. How you handle this season will determine the next season of your walk with the Lord. Let me explain. Let me give you a few pointers as a matter of fact. Number one, don't give in to temptation. Don't accommodate, don't plan for sin just to get through the holiday season. There are some people who, because they are lonely, they might seek to get a comfort. I was going to say comforter, but that's not a good word. <laughs> because they're lonely, they will seek to get a bed partner. Let me put it that way. During the holiday, just to get through the holiday. They, they, they would seek to shack up. It's not worth it. Whatever the temptation might be, and it might not be that, it can be something else that satisfies the flesh, but it destroys, it destroys what you have with Jesus Christ. It's not worth it. Don't give in to sin. Don't plan for sin. Don't accommodate or entertain sin just to get through the holiday season. It's just not worth it. Secondly, wholesome entertainment is good. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Laugh a little bit. You know, bring up some something that you like to watch or connect with people. That's even better. But enjoy it and find the time to get some rest. All right? Enjoy it. Thirdly, this is for the ladies and maybe the few men who do this. <laughs> if you cook up a storm during the festive season, carve out some time to rest. You know, it's never easy being on our feet all day or for very long periods, cooking all kinds of things and feel so tired and beat out at the end of the day. Carve out some time to rest. That's fine too. And fourthly, probably most importantly, during this festive season, maintain your holiness. Maintain your character. Maintain your godly character. Maintain your witness, your Christian witness. Because guess what? Holiness is not intended to be seasonal. 
like some fruits. Mm -mm. Holiness should characterize the lifestyle of every believer. And it is a lifestyle, a 24-7 preoccupation that we must be deliberate, intentional to reflect as we continue to press into Christ and maintain our relationship with him. That should be how Christians choose to live or seek to live daily. Keep Jesus as the priority. So after Christmas, then what? Just in case you are watching and you are not a Christian, I want you to know that since the fall of Adam and Eve, mankind has been, humankind has been predisposed to sin. The Bible says that we were born in sin. We are born in sin and shapen in iniquity. We have a predisposition to do the things that are wrong, that go against God. But then Jesus is coming that first coming, which is the, the pinnacle. Can I say that? I don't even know if I'm using that word rightly. <laughs> but he is the point of why we celebrate, commemorate, why we pause to acknowledge his coming and his presence in this time that we call Christmas. So it's not really a celebration. It's more of a commemoration. But God in Christ saw how much we needed him and saw that there needed to be a way for us to be redeemed, for us to be restored to what it was in the garden. And he sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins and to make it possible for us to be restored to God that relationship to be mended. So I want you to know that you can invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. You can pray and ask him to come into your life. You can surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins and allow the Lord to take full control of your life as you surrender. Your life will never be the same again. It won't. Won't you step into 2023 with Jesus Christ? I know I will, as long as the grace of God keeps me alive to see that time. I am planning to keep Jesus the priority of my life. God bless you. Thank you so much for stopping by and for listening to this reflection. Forgive me if it didn't sound very structured, but I just wanted to share what my thoughts in this season as I went along. And by the way, let me just tell you quickly, I went to church, had a great time at church, wonderful time in worship and ministry. The word was relevant, potent, and inspiring. And then, my little baby girl, I ended the evening by telling her again the reason we acknowledge Christmas as Christians, as believers, reiterating what we believe and tell her about that coming of Jesus Christ 
and how the angels celebrated and how Mary responded and all of that. It bears repeating because people tend to forget truth. God bless you. And until next time, always remember, God speaks. Thank you.